Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Finally, we have some huge sequence presets updates in Adobe Premiere Pro. Yay! All right, there's a good chance you don't use an old ass camera like this <laughs> DV camera from a long time ago. Horrible little yucky camera. When I used to work for Adobe, a whole bunch of us said Adobe needs to change this preset. Once HD became the norm, that old preset for that old camera was the default setting on every version of Premiere Pro until recently. I was amazed. I opened up a Premiere Pro, went to create a new sequence, and well, let me show you what I saw. So creating a new sequence here, by clicking on the little page, new there, or you can right click and new sequence. And now we get this. So it's divided into broadcast, standard HD and social. I wanna show you what it used to be. Oh, and also we get 4K high dynamic range and 4K. But this used to be the default setting, DV NTSC, that one right there, 72480, 09091, so not even square pixels. The issue was, even when, the, when HD came out, people that were, were not familiar with Premiere Pro would, would create a new sequence, that was the one that was selected, they'd click OK, and they would edit their footage in a DV timeline. Yikes, that is now in the legacy. Let me show you where all of this is, because it's still there. So in, in the... Um, C drive on Windows in the in your application files on the Mac, if you just go to where Premiere Pro, the application is, and we go to settings and sequence presets. So that should look exactly like what we have there. Broadcast, HD, Legacy, Social, and what the organization is that Legacy is down here on the bottom. Now, of course, you can make your own uh, and, and place it in there, but the idea that this is now easier to get to. So in Broadcast, uh, some standard settings for 23.98, all with mono, 25 interlaced, 29.97 interlaced. Um, so let's go and look at the social ones. We've got social portrait, 4x5, portrait 9x16, and square. So I'm just going to grab this vertical video just to show you um, one other little tip. If you are working with vertical video, let me just show you this. Um, I'll duplicate this one. So what a lot of people will do is scale this up and then try to position this around. And the problem is this person is riding all over the place and eventually they're out of the camera's view in, in lots of those like here. So you'd have to add keyframes and stuff like that. or you can use the amazing auto reframe. Boy, oh boy, can't get enough of this. And I'll just analyze that. And you can see they're in the frame and they're not in the frame. So one more look at that. I can't tell you how much I love this. Um, you know, the HDR settings for 4K, I'm probably just gonna live right in here in this HD setting um, and make my new sequence like that and drop my footage in. So it's not huge in functionality, it's just huge in ease of use. It's going to be really hard 
for you to accidentally pick something for this crappy camera. You're gonna have to go out of your way and root around in there. And of course, if you are doing things like uh, working with red cameras, then you can move those out so that they're not stuck inside the legacy. You've got lots of control on how that, that screen opens up, but just having that, those old nasty DV settings out of the way, finally, I can't believe it's taken this long. It's just a huge update. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, uh, take a moment and subscribe. We really do appreciate it if you do that. And if you want to support us some more, you can do that on videoreveal.com slash shop. Donate once, monthly, any amount. Thanks to all of our wonderful donors. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get all jazzed up about something that uh, I think is a huge update and let you know uh, why it is important and the fact that it's going to be harder for you to choose the wrong sequence setting.